Good morning, everyone. This is Nikki Gordon Bloomfield here from Transport Evolved with another thought of the day. But before I get on to that, thank you for all of your wonderful comments on the two earlier thoughts of the days this week. Uh, one relating to price and range, and yesterday's one, which was on our electric cars or green cars too feminine for manly men to want to own. Um, as you all told me uncategorically in the comments yesterday, um, electric cars are in no way really girly and although some models may appear that way or appeal more to women I had plenty of men in the comments going I'm a manly man and I've got one or I'm doing this um, for more than you know whether I'm worried about whether a car is is feminine or masculine so yay for you that was brilliant I was really hoping that those are the answers that I was going to get but what do I want to talk to you about today I want to talk to you today about some comments that have been made in the last um, week or so uh, concerning Tesla and level three autonomous vehicle operation. Now, um, as those of you know, on Sunday, Tesla revealed um, some more information about how its autopilot, its new autopilot software in the 8.0 software update for Tesla Model S and Model X would operate and that it would shift its primary sensors away from visual ones to radar based systems. Now, yesterday, Elon Musk stated that he believed that the radar based system, um, oh, sorry, on Sunday, he stated that the radar based system that Tesla is now going to use would have prevented the fatal accident that killed Joshua Brown earlier this year, uh, in which his Tesla Model S, which was traveling above the speed limit, hit a, uh, a tractor trailer unit and um, basically took its roof off and killed him in the process. Um, Musk said in a Q&A session that he believed that this radar based system would have prevented such an accident, which, first of all, I think is is not particularly helpful to Mr. Brown's family or, or to anyone else, really. Yes, OK, maybe the radar system is safer than the previous system, but that's to be expected when you roll out incremental updates to a vehicle um, system. Um, but along those lines, Elon Musk also then went on to say, uh, has said in the past week that he feels it's irresponsible uh, for automakers not to push cars, um, to push out safety features that improve cars' safety and use that as a justification for Tesla moving to level three autonomous vehicle operation, um, which is essentially a system where the car drives, you know, 60, 70% of the time and a human driver is there that has to be ready to step in and take over if the car needs it. Now, um, those kind of systems have come under a lot of criticism from the likes of Google and the likes of Volvo and a couple of other automakers as well, who've said, no, we should just skip level three autonomy and just go to level four autonomy, which is essentially the car can drive itself without human interaction in normal conditions. And it can get itself to the side of the road and stop itself if need be. It might still have pedals and a steering wheel, but really those are essentially the backup, 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 backup operation. The car can pretty much do everything else. Um, and it's got me thinking a little bit about that. And I want to talk today and I want you to leave your thoughts in the comments below about level three versus level four autonomy. Should we be building cars and putting them out on the roads that can be driven in fully manual mode? but can also be driven in a, in a reasonably sophisticated level three autonomy um, with the expectation that the driver will take over? Or are drivers just too damn lazy that, that, that we'll end up in a situation where people are dying because they're not paying attention to their car going, hello, yeah, I need you to take over now. I, I don't know. I'm sitting on the fence, which is one of the reasons why I want to talk about this today as a thought of the day. I can see the benefits of having that because Elon Musk is right. Having a car that has advanced safety features in it that can ensure that nothing bad happens is always going to be a positive. The problem is that system relies on humans who are, by our very nature, very complex individuals and we make a lot of mistakes. So we're taking a system that's very good and then we're relying on a backup system to be a not very good system. Now, I used to work um, in, in radio um, and I've got my own experience here running Transport Evolved. And one of the things I learned very quickly is that in broadcasting, you have a backup system 
so that if your main system goes down, you can, you can use a backup system to keep you going again. But your system is only as good as your backup system. If your main system fails, you need another system that's as good as your main system to pick up and take on. Because if you don't, then things will invariably spiral, spiral out of control, go downhill. In other words, if you've got a really fancy uh, production studio and you rely on it 24-7 to produce news and, and broadcast on television or the radio and something goes wrong with it, you need another identical studio that is equally equipped that you can jump into and carry on. Because if you then have to downgrade to a lesser studio, a backup studio, things go wrong. They will go wrong because the equipment is old. Maybe the, the hosts or the production team are not as, uh, uh, as well versed with it. And I think the same is true for cars. Ideally, if we're going to have an autonomous vehicle, we need multiple, not just two, two, three, four computer systems and backup sensors that can operate if the main system goes down and still continue to deliver the high quality level of autonomy. Relying on humans to step down and be that backup is a little risque. And I kind of, I'm leaning towards Google and Volvo for this because that's where they sit, Ford as well. The idea being that you, you shift your attention to level four autonomy and then you make driving an optional thing rather than a, you're going to be required to drive if the computer fails. I want the system to be, this car is fully autonomous, you can drive it. And then if you fancy driving by yourself in manual mode, by all means, go ahead, be our guest. I think Nissan is going that way as well. It's certainly what I've experienced from riding in Nissan's autonomous vehicle prototypes. Anyway, this is another really long one, so I'm going to stop now. Leave your thoughts in the comments below as to whether you think I'm right, wrong, or just plain mad. Uh, as always, you can find me on Twitter. I am at a minor journey. You can also find Transport Evolve on Twitter at Transport Evolve. And if you wish to support us, you can do so by going to www.patreon.com forward slash Transport Evolved and donating there from as little as $1 per month. We really appreciate it. We've just gone over our $1,000 mark. Yay. And if we keep building, we can get that up to $2,000 and we can start doing a whole lot more in the YouTube sphere. I can actually start doing proper shows again and I've got some great ideas. So help me raise that money. Until tomorrow, take care.